So we've got a lot of people out there who are jazz, uh, you know, fans, um, you know, but they're potentially maybe intimidated by it, confused by it. I mean, I listen to jazz every single day and I still, I mean, I'm the one, you know, I have this other book, How to Listen to Jazz, you know, by that same, by, by good old Ted. And I found it super helpful. And so, you know, we're talking to somebody that obviously, you know, has spent many, many hours and you, you listen to jazz in a completely different way than the, than the normal person. Actually, you know, we were talking about, you know, we have a friend, a mutual friend whose father growing up was a football coach. And I remember watching football with him on the weekends and he was a head football coach for a, a, a division two school or three school. And the way that he watched football and the things he saw when he watched football were completely different than the things that I saw. And so I can only assume that, you know, when you listen to music, the things that you see here are, are different. So let's start there. When you're listening to jazz, you know, what are you listening for? Um, you know, what do you hear that, that, that we aren't, you know, Talk us through that process of how a, a jazz professor and an and a accomplished musician listens to this music that some people find intimidating or confusing. Mm. Yeah, it's a really good question. You know, I, I think the thing that's probably surprising to a lot of people is, well, one, I don't re really listen to a ton of vocal music. Uh, and a lot of people would say that's really strange. And then Frankly, when I do listen to vocal music, sometimes I don't even notice if they're singing in English or Portuguese or, or, or Spanish. I don't, I don't really listen to the lyrics, and I, I probably should, but, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing other things. I'm just hearing the melodies and, and the harmonies and how that, that interconnects. And, and, you know, there's basically three elements of music and, and rhythm, melody, and harmony, and just kind of hearing how all that locks in. And... Uh, you know, another another thought about it in terms of people not understanding jazz is what gives a whole lot of depth, especially to understanding the American songbook, is really just knowing the repertoire. So what, what you have to think is we're operating at a deficit because this is 2020. If, if it was 1940, one thing that happened in popular music in 1940 is all the bands played the same songs because there was no jukebox. So you know, random band comes to town, everybody played um, uh, uh, one o'clock jump, one o'clock jump, like that, that was, that, it was a bassy tune, but Benny Goodman played at Carnegie Hall in 1938, everybody played one o'clock jump, and that's, that's an example, that's actually instrumental, but, but everybody on earth would have known that tune, but they wouldn't have known it, it it's not like the same as today, like today there's like, um, you know, uh, a tune that's by Rihanna and you wouldn't expect uh, some other artist to sing Rihanna. Beyonce wouldn't sing a Rihanna song, but, but it, it, it's, so it's a little different than today. And then another way to think about it is, um, you know, years ago I used to go play for old people and we could bring them to tears with an instrumental version of Bye Bye Blackbird. But the reason they would understand the depth of that music is they'd sing along, they'd know the lyrics. And so this is, this is something that's kind of lost now. Um, so really to understand traditional jazz music, it would be helpful. I have a lot of students uh, take a tune like uh, Easy Living. Easy Living is a beautiful jazz tune. Take 10 versions of that and listen to 10 different artists play the same tune. It provides a different kind of depth. You can, you can also learn it through like Billie Holiday singing lyrics. So if a, if a non-musician knows the lyrics and can sing, sing along with Billie Holiday, then you pull up a, the same tune by a different artist, you're going to totally know what's going on. Because the format of the tune generally is some type of a head and then some kind of improvised solo. The head meaning like the melody at the beginning and then the head out or the melody out. And so that's, that's really, I think, what really confuses people is just the fact that, you know, there, there's maybe... Uh, hundreds, hundreds, 400 tunes that, that, that you really kind of have to know to be a jazz musician. And that's, that's, that's a, that's a tall order for an audience member, sure. but you know, just, just to take a, take a few steps in like, you know, offhand, I could tell you the, the primer to really understand jazz would be get the Ella Fitzgerald songbook records. Ella Fitzgerald's great jazz singer. We would have known her in our childhood as the woman who was on the Memorex commercials, you know, right. she would sing in the break the glass uh, I think she was in a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial, too. Uh, she's a great American jazz singer. She was actually born in Virginia, as I recall. 
as was Max Roach, I believe. So th there's a handful, but um, she did these songbook records. So it's like Duke Ellington songbook, really great. Um, Cole Porter songbook. And each of these records is, is packaged to, to kind of, uh, you know, shake, showcase the music of these different artists. So to me, that would be a really great way to get into it because uh, the, the reality is most people in the world don't understand a saxophone. <laughs> you know, vocal vocal is is what people really get. Another would be uh, Duke Ellington and uh, Louis Armstrong. That's a nice record. You know, there's there's some kind of like uh, easy easy records to get into. You know, Coltrane with Duke, Duke Ellington. That would be an easy one to understand. You're in D.C., so I have to give you the Duke Ellington references. Exactly. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> that. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's a great tip. I mean, just that standpoint of you know, all these artists were playing those same songs. And yeah, because these bands would come into town, maybe they'd, maybe they'd pick up a player, you know, and they'd say, you know, that player would have to know all the songs that, they, that they're going to play. So you, you play these, you know, and so people he heard them over and over and over again. So the tip to, you know, go find, you know, a few standards and then listen to multiple versions of those and see how they change. And, and you can really start to pick up on, you know, and pay attention, I, mean, I would say, uh, you know, pay attention to, the year that that particular version was recorded and you can hear you know, okay well you know the, the the solo is you know twice as long in this version as it was in the earlier version because it was a much, it was a different time or whatever it is or the different players involved and so you know really dive in to and i think it helps in music appreciation in general but listening to multiple versions of the same song is a great uh you know way to get into jazz that's a great tip